What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to another video. To the original OGs, you know who it is. To the new subscribers, it's your boy Brandon. I'm April. So today um, we're doing a question and answer video. Uh, so we're basically gonna be asking each other questions. We haven't uh, seen each other's questions, so this should be very interesting on what we're asking each other and then our responses to the <laughs> questions. So, you know, we hope you guys enjoy the video and any comments you have. You know, leave them Here we go. So the whole point is for us to be honest or try to be as honest as possible. Um, I, I told you our channel is very transparent. And so we're gonna um, get the question and answer them as truthful as possible. Truthful. All right. And all right, here we go, the first question. Quick, the first question for her is, um, let me see, I got a list of them on my phone, so I'm just looking. Um, what's different about our relationship now than the first time around? Hmm. So, in case you guys don't know, me and Brandon dated up 10 years ago, and then recently, last year, we got back together. So, what I think is different, um, I definitely think we've grown a lot. So, I would say when we dated back in 2009, 10, we were younger, um, and I think with, you know, age that plays a big factor i definitely think like over the years we've grown up um so i would say like i said like growth as far as like any not even just relationship wise but within ourselves we've grown a lot um i think that has made our relationship so much better because we've just like grown um just as our own person um i feel like that as far as you like you're more thoughtful now um thoughtful. like yeah you're more thoughtful, thoughtful um slightly <laughs> I think you're more thoughtful now, you're more considerate, and like, just with like growing up and you get wiser, I feel like you're not as like, back to that, you were like selfish. <laughs> so I definitely think you've like grown a lot and like you're just more thoughtful, you're more about family. Now, I'm not saying you're not, you're more about family then, but I think like now your main priority is like family. So I really appreciate that, and I think that's what has changed from then to now. Okay, okay, respect. Yeah, respect that. that was a good question. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> my question was, what made you fall in love with me? What made me fall in love with you when? Before, now? Either or, before, now. So, <clears throat> so, so I think it, now it was just, it was just a carryover from um, 10 years ago, as she <laughs> said. And then it's just like, throughout the, throughout the years of us not being with each other, uh, we always uh, was um, good friends. We always remained good yeah. friends. Like I used to call her all the time, talk about my relationship at the <laughs> time and and so forth. But uh, but I think just um, doing that time away from her, and you realize that you um, what you have now is not uh, what you had before. So I think doing that time helps me. It helped me like love her more and more, even. At a friend level, mm -hmm. me being in love with her, then once we just kind of got back in a relationship, it made it so much easier for for me to fall in love um, uh, instantly like that. So, so the love that I had um, over the years it just grew, and then now we're at a point where you know what I'm saying she my everything, and Aww. <laughs> and, uh, and I love her. So I love, I love her. Too. I'm in love with her. So <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. So that's that what made me fall in love with you. So it never changed. It just it just got more and more uh, deeper as the time went on. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> All right. My my turn now. Uh, what what is something about me that bothers you? Mm. Truthfully, what's well, something about you that bothers me? I think that sometimes, um, just sort of like any relationship or just people, sometimes it's hard for us to like sympathize or have empathy for other people because we haven't experienced that. So I think sometimes if I have something on my mind that um, that's bothering me, you don't, you can't relate to it because you may have never like went through that. So a lot of times it's hard for you to like reason or just be sympathetic or have a little bit of empathy because hey, I never went through it. You know what I'm saying? You try, but I think sometimes like it comes off a little harsh because you're just like, oh, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. But it's like I feel like you don't know, how, you don't know how to like empathize with or have sympathy for it because you've never been through that. 
And I think that that's just for anybody, not even just you, though. I think that's for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Like, sometimes when we haven't been through a situation, it's hard to, like, relate to some people. It's like, well, I've never been through it, so you don't really know what the right thing is to say. And sometimes people just want comfort or, like, you to be like, oh, you know, I understand and listen instead of just say, oh, it'll be all right. It's okay. It's cool. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know that we ain't supposed to be, like, commenting on each other's question, but uh, this just a, a statement that I'm going to just um, put out there. Yeah, like, like, like she'll tell you, like, I'm not really, like, big on sympathy. None. And, and but I have gotten better over the years. And, and it's, and, and this is for all, all the guys out there who was manly and, and want to be this tough guy. I mean, it's okay to be, have some type of sympathy. It's, it's, it's okay to be soft with your girl, you know what I'm saying? It's okay to show that side, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be around mean mugging the whole time and, like, you're just this tough guy. Then when you get behind doors, you just, you know, you just, you just soft. But, but but it's okay to show that side of your softness. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that I'm learning to do more and more as this relationship progresses. So, it's okay. There ain't no wrong with it, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. So, my next question is, what is one of the biggest lessons that you've learned from past relationships? One of the biggest lessons. Man, that's a good question. And... So, so I'm gonna just take probably what I can remember my last three serious relationships. And so I think it's some from each one of those females who who I thank a lot because because um, without them, I wouldn't be able to be the man that I am to her today because through those relationships, it was bits and pieces that I learned that I applied it to the next relationship, then the next relationship and to now. So um, the, um, the biggest thing that I learned from previous relationship is it's just different things. Um, honestly, so I can't pinpoint one particular thing, mm -hmm. but it's but it's it's different things. Um, being more of a um, family guy, right? So I was with a, a female who who had kids and who I had to adjust to because she had kids and I didn't have kids staying with me at the time. So me just being able to try to be this family father figure kind of helped me in that direction, which I was already a good damn father, <laughs> but it helped me even more to become an even greater father. And then um, my, my last relationship, um, that, rela that relationship taught me taught me a lot. And um, and it taught me a, a bunch of good stuff and bad things. And, and the bad things, um, I vow not to bring it over to my next relationship. But um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been a lot of things that I have learned over the That's good. over my past relationship. We've That's all good. learned something from yeah. everybody, Definitely. whether it's good or bad. Definitely. So, I mean, I, I don't know if that answers your question no, to a it team, did. but it did. but it's it just did. it's just so many different areas that um, can be talked about. But it's something you would take from your last year's relationship and apply it to ours. Um, what's something I would take from my last relationship and apply it to ours? Um, I think that honestly my last uh, relationship probably taught me patience. To kind of have more patience and um, that, um, patience in how to express myself more. Because I feel like sometimes I tend to want everyone expressing a relationship to like read my mind. Like you're supposed to know what's wrong. So I think that definitely taught me like you'll never get anywhere without expressing how you feel. Everybody doesn't know how you're feeling because they're not in your head. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's definitely like one of the things that taught me, like if you if something's bothering you, if something's wrong, or if you know if you need to say something, being emotional or having an attitude is not gonna fix the problem that you right. know so you need to talk about it and bring it up. And then, you know what I'm saying, the other person is able to respond because now they know. They don't know if you're just walking around with an attitude and you're just leaving them clues for them to figure it out. I, I can agree with that. <laughs> I can I'm, agree. I'm still not there yet. But no, I'm working, definitely, definitely. I'm working on it. But, but I tell you, it, it's a, a, a slight difference from <laughs> a year ago to, to today. And, uh, I'm working on it. I'm working yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but it don't help that, that at times that both of us can be stubborn. Very. And then, cause me, I think I'm a very stubborn person, and and I and I can go. And if you ain't talking to me, she, you better believe I'm not even finna say nothing. So we'll go, <laughs> we'll go a day or two without talking. But but what but what has improved is that I have I'm learning to 
to um, be the one to initiate uh, a conversation and try to make the situation better, trying to turn things around. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's a work in progress, yeah. and I think just with both of the way we are um, as people, stubborn and so forth. I mean, it could be tough, but you know what I'm saying? You, you figure out you work good, and hopefully it don't last a week. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all go without talking, you just walk around the house and, and not speaking to each other. So, so that can be kind of awkward. So, so yeah. 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 Good question. So, I think my next one I'm going to ask is, do you think that people fall in love because they met the right person or because the time is right? And when I mean the time to write, it's like, you know, a person just came into your life at the moment mm -hmm. where you kind of like needed somebody, so. Yeah. Okay, I see where you're going. Um, so, so, I, so I think it depends on the, the individual, you know, it's like, so I can use me as a sample. Like, it's like, it's hard for me to say that, that I'm in love with a person, I love a person. And I, I think that comes with time and, and you say you build up to that, to that point. But when it came to her, it was pretty easy because we had already, had something going on, but it was something something new. I think it, it takes time, man. And I, I don't think you can put a time on it. You know when it's right. Yeah. And I don't think if you meet somebody, then a week later, y'all telling each other you love y'all love each other. Or probably it's probably gonna be one person that feels in love than the other person. It's always like that. And so so I don't think after week y'all you should be telling anybody that you love them because I don't think y'all did it. But maybe you it's just that void in that life that that person is making you feel good for that time being. And it's making you feel like, man, like this feels good. I'm in love. So, so I, so I, so I don't think it's no time, but I, but I don't think it should be as quick as a week. You know what I'm saying? Let it build up to that point. Wait to, wait till you like you really feel it, and and yeah, you know that this person is is the one. If it's not even for for life, at least it's gonna be this person for a long time. Are there times you feel like uh, I'm ent entertaining somebody else? Whoo. <laughs> that when I do if I, if I do feel like that I think it's because I'm just irritated at something and it may not be, have anything to do with anybody else or thinking that you're doing anything it's just I feel like it's easier if I'm irritated to say oh well you know I can't be no attention oh, it's somebody else so I think that a lot of the time it just comes from a place of frustration with that has nothing to do with you entertaining anybody but it's easier for me to, if I'm mad at something that's completely different, yeah. it's easier for me to say, oh, that's what it is because I want to piss my, well, I don't know if I want to piss myself off more or just piss you off. So I feel like for that, but I think you're very attentive in the relationship. Um, but honestly, because I've been in other relationships and that like, I feel like you should never put anybody on the pedestal to feel like they would never ever cheat on you because I feel like everybody has vulnerable moments. Of course. Whether they're, they're intentionally out of trying to do something or it was just a vulnerable moment, I don't think anybody is above and beyond not to mess up. Oh, yeah. So I don't think you're cheating or you're entertaining anyone, but I do think that with anybody that that's not off the table. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I, I appreciate that. Hey, man, <laughs> to you fellas out there, keep doing the right thing, man. You know, keep doing the right thing. You yeah. Uh, my last one would be, I kind of almost like that. It's, I think I was, my question was, do you think a person can commit to one person forever, ever? I'm talking about, like, you get with them, whether you're married or just dating, do you think that a person can always commit to one person? A, a young person in their 20s, right, is going to be different than a person in their 30s and their 40s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on your mindset. Like, when I was 20, in my 20s, you know, I was, you know, I was wild, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, um, and I, and I was, I was all about me. I was having a good time. I was young and, and some things came easier than some. So, um, so yeah, so, so during that time, yeah, I was in, a re I was married in my 20s. So, um, and I wasn't, I wasn't even doing the right thing, but, uh, but so then my twenties, but then being in my thirties now, now, um, I can say yes, because I'm a, I'm more mature now. And, and the way I look at life now, is like, you don't, I don't want to be that 40, 50 year old single in the club <laughs> trying to get, trying to find something. And, and you know what I'm saying? You, you don't want to be that person. So, um, so I think once they get to a certain a certain age, yeah, and they can you know finally you know put all the the plan and the BS aside, and yeah, you you can fully commit to to somebody for forever, and ever. But probably not, probably not in your twenties. I don't care what nobody yeah. says. You know what I'm saying? You can sit here and argue up and down. You're in your twenties. 
even 30s, you know what I'm saying, you, you know what I'm saying, you doing you, you know what I'm saying, so, but, hey, it's, I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. So, but not everybody will be ready to settle down in their 30s. I think it just, it, it comes with time, like, you know what I'm saying, yeah. like, it comes with time and knowing that's the person for you, and I feel like then that will determine, like, how you move around, like, because obviously you meet the person that you feel like is just there for you, then yeah, you're going to commit, and that's something, because you don't want to mess that up. Yeah. And I think it's so easier to be vulnerable about everything on the outside world that sometimes people mess up and like, oh my goodness, it wasn't worth it. So I feel like that just comes with maturity and knowing that if you want to be with this person forever, then yeah, you'll commit. So, yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed our questions. Uh, like I said, sure. it was very entertaining for me too to see the question that he was asking me. So yeah. But yeah, so, so so this is something that that I think like all couples should do, not on camera, but just uh, just behind closed doors. I think y'all need to take the time out and, and have these conversations with each other so y'all can see where y'all at in y'all relationship. Uh, I remember the first time I brought this up to her about a uh, what I say state of our relationship yeah. a, a couple weeks ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> she thought. What well, is yeah, the state of our relationship? She already, she already assumed it was so negative, but it was uh, something that I think that uh, all couples should do just to see well what way y'all let y'all relationship in areas which y'all can uh, improve on to make y'all relationship grow even further. So um, yeah, so I think that's I think that's it. Thank y'all yeah. for watching. Don't forget to uh, comment, share, subscribe. Turn, turn on your notifications. notifications. Yeah. Please turn on the notifications. Hit the bell button right beside the subscribe button so it turns on your notifications because you won't get it. Even if you're subscribed, if you don't hit the notification every time we post a video. So leave your comments down below. See y'all next time. Peace.